In this video, we're going to take a look at a legal problem called nest permutation. So implement the nest permutation function, which rearranges numbers into the le lexicographically nest greater permutation of numbers. So if such an arrangement is not possible, where let's say we have a situation where we have the maximum permutation of our current sequence, that we want to rearrange it as the lowest possible order, sort, sort it in ascending order, right? So the replacement must be in place. Basically means that we want to compute this or complete this function in a constant space complexity. So you can see here we have an example, right? So let's say we have nums is equal to one, two, three. So if it's one, two, three, we want to generate the next permutation. The next permutation that is greater than 123, which is 132, right? There's also other permutations like 213 right or 321 right these are permutation are greater than this element but in this case we want to find the next greater element that is greater than you know the current uh in, in this case the current sequence right so in this case the the solution will be 132 or in this case 132 and like i said before if we have a situation in this case if it's if it's not possible to rearrange it to the next greater element in this case, what we have to do is we have to, you know, rearrange it as the lowest possible order, which is sorted in ascending order, right? So you can see here we convert it into one, two, three, which basically means that uh, we reverse the array into a sorted array, right? Because we know that this is the max, right? So there's no more that we can go above that. So in this case, we can just reverse the array into one, two, three, right? And let's say we have an example like this, one, one, five. In this case, if I the next greater element for this sequence is with basically one five one right and same thing here the last if it's just only one element in this case we can just say that we cannot find the next permutation we can just don't do anything right and remember the, the function returns void so we're not returning anything we're basically just modifying the array so in this case the constraints is that the length of the array is between one to one hundred can each element can, can contain duplicates in the array, and we can also, uh, the element ranges between zero to 100. So in this case, how can we be able to solve this problem? So let's take a look at the example here, right? So let's say we have one, two, and three. So let's say we have one, two, and three. In this case, what we can do is that maybe we can look at the current element, right? We, we look at the current element. In this case, current element is greater than the left element. Maybe we can just swap their order, right? And then in this case, you can see we get one, three, two, right? So you might be thinking maybe this will, this will be a, a, a the correct approach to solve this problem, but you, you're wrong, right? Because you can see here, let's say if I want to find the next permutation for this sequence, then in this case, I know that the current element, which is less than the, the uh, which is less than the left element. So in this case, we, this is not, this not element is not, we cannot swap those two, right? Because if we were to swap those two, you can see that the order will be one, two, three. So therefore, this is actually less than this element, right? So this is not going to work. So what we need to do is we continue. So we know that this current element is actually greater than this element. So maybe if we follow the same logic, we will uh, swap those two elements here, right? So you can see we will swap those two elements. And then what we will get, we will get three, one, two. And three, one, two is not the correct answer for this sequence because in this case the the proper answer for this sequence is actually two one three right because you can see here the next greater element here is two one three so in this case this approach that we were just talking about is wrong so in this case in this case what's the right approach to solve this problem so in this case you can see here um for following the the the, uh, the, the approach that we just talked about we can be able to find the element that we want to change right? Because in this case, the element that we want to change here is for sure it's going to be one, right? We cannot change two or three. In this case, if we swap two and three, that's not going to happen. Because if we swap two and th or three and two, right? Three and two, then we, will, then we will become something like this. So in this case, the only thing that we can swap is basically this element right here, right? So in this case, if I want to swap this element to something else, which element should we swap? In this case, this element should swap to the next greater element, right? The next greater element is what? It's two, right? If we swap this element with the next greater element, in this case, it's not gonna be three because three is, is, is the biggest, right? Two is basically just in between one and three, which is the next greater element than one. So in this case, we wanna swap 
right? What we want to do is we will actually want to swap one with two instead of three. So in this case, we have two, right? Three and one. And then what we notice is that, right, we got three here, right? We got two here. But then what we had to do is we have to fix the, you know, the remaining elements here. Because in this case, the next greater element should be two, one, three instead of three, one, right? So maybe what we can do here is that we, we can just reverse the order because in this case, we know that this is three, this is one, right? So what we can do is we can just reverse the order of the remaining subsequence, right? So in this case, it will give us two, one, three because in this case, we want to find the next greater element, right? Because after we swap the next greater element than one, which is two, we also have to make sure to reverse that. The reason why we reverse this part is because in this case, you know that we know that the the, the right side, right, the, this subsequence, they're all in a decreasing order, right? Because the condition is that if the current element Right? If the current element is greater, or in this case is not greater than the left element, then this is not then this is this is not the element that we want to that we want to change, right? So in this case, we continue to search on the left side to find that element. So that's what we're trying to do here. So let's say we give you another example, right? So let's say we have one or maybe three, two, three, two, one. So let's say we have three, two, one. So in this case, you can see here we can basically do the same logic. We check to see if the current element is greater than the, next, the left element. In this case, it's not. This is not. This is not. So therefore, what we can do is we basically, uh, in this case, you can see our pointer basically point out of bound. So we basically just have to reverse the right subsequence. But in this case, let's say we have like 1, 1, and 5, right? In this case, let's say we have 1, 1, 5. We check to see if this is greater than this element. In this case, it is. Right, the current element is greater than the left element. So we know that this is the element that we want to change, that we want to swap to, right? In this case, we want to swap to a element that is greater than the current element. In this case, the next greater element uh, on the right side is five, right? So we swap one with a five, so now we have one, five, one. And then what we have to do is we have to reverse the right side, so we have uh, just one here, right? So basically our job is that so let's say we have another example, right? So let's say we have this sequence right here, right? So what we're going to do is we check to see if current element is greater than the left. In this case, it's not. This element is not greater than the left. This element is not. This element is greater than the left. So we know that this is the element that we want to change, right? So what we have to do is we basically trying to find the next smallest element on the right side, which is five. So in this case, what we're going to do is we have swap the order, right, with five and four, right? So in this case, we have something like this. And then now what we have to do is we basically have to reverse the right side, right? The right subsequence. In this case, we have something like this, right? Four and six. In this case, you can see this is basically the next greater uh, or the next permutation of this sequence right here, right? So now you know how we can be able to solve this problem. Let's take a look at how we can do this in code. So now let's take a look at the code, right? So you can see here we have a function nest permutation, which takes the integer array. So our base case is that if n, right, is only, there's only one element in the array, then we could just return, right? Because in this case, the nest permutation is basically the array itself. So what we're going to do then is that we're going to first find the elements to replace, right? So in this case, let's say we have four, six, five, three, right? It doesn't really matter what we have up front. Basically, you can see here, we want to find the elements that we want to replace. In this case, we are starting from here, right? The current is pointed here, the previous pointed here, right? So in this case, we have a current pointer and the previous pointer. We're shifting, right? Moving from the right side to the left side, right? We go from the right to the left. In this case, what we're going to do is that if we, if there's a situation where the previous element is actually bigger than the current element, right? And that will be at this position, right? In this case, six is actually bigger than four. Then what we have to do is we just break. And once we break, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna check the two things, right? If the current index, in this case, this is current, if current is actually bigger than or equal to zero. Why? Because there could be a situation where we only have six, five, three, right? If we only have six, five, three, and in this case, guess what current is here? And the previous is right here, right? So you can see here current, is out of bound. So if it's out of bound, then we just have to reverse what we have for prev and the last element, right? Which is this sequence right here, right? But if not, if the element that we wanted to replace is somewhere in the array, 
right, which is bigger than or equal to zero. Now what we do first is we wanna find the index that we wanna swap, right? And then we reverse the remaining subsequence, right? So you can see here we have our, in this case, we have our uh, pointer, right? So in this case, you can see the reason why we wanna do this way, right? This code right here, the reason, because you can see here, you notice um, during the process of coming towards current, right? Here is a decreasing order, right? Because of this condition. If it's a dec decreasing order, then we know that we can basically try to find the next element by starting from the last element, right? So does this element greater than four? In this case, not five. In this case, five is, right? Because in this case, you can see it's a decreasing order. So the next element that we can find that's greater than this current element is guaranteed to be the next greater element for four, right? So the next greater element for four is five. So we're gonna replace that. So five, six, four, three, right? And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna reverse the last half or the, you know, you know in this case, the right half of the subarray, right? In this case, we have five, three, four, and six. So now you can see this is basically our answer and that's why we reverse it here. So this is how we solve the problem. So in this case, the time complexity for this solution is gonna be big O of N, where we're basically just going to iterate the array a couple of times, right? So first we wanna find the elements to replace and then what we do is we basically try to find the replace index and then we reverse the, the array, which still the time complexity is big O of N, right? And the space complexity here is basically just gonna be big O of one because you can see here, we're only using pointers, right? Using a couple pointers to reverse the array or basically try to find the nest or the elements to replace or try to find the elements to, or the replace index, right? So in this case, the overall space complexity is basically just gonna be big O of one.